glorious day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. You know, I've had a joy in my spirit this morning. I've had a fire in my bones this morning because I know what God wants to bring forth to his people today. And that excites me, uh, you know, to hear from God, to hear what the Father has to say to us, you know, will bring us strength and it will bring us uh, an encouragement and a hope. Hallelujah. You know, we're coming to you live today from Athens, Georgia. My name is Sherry White and we're from Fountain of Life Ministries International. I thank you for all of those that are viewing right now. I thank you for your prayers and your support. Um, I just uh, give the, the Lord all the glory for what he's doing through these broadcasts. We're hearing from all over the world, and it's exciting uh, to know that that the, this type of, of technology and this type of media uh, can reach the world. It's a global um, setup. Hallelujah. And we thank the Lord for it. Today, I want to talk to you about God's war plan. God's war plan is to pursue peace. To pursue peace. And we're going to talk about that war plan today. And I'm going to start in Isaiah 55. If you, uh, excuse me, in 54. Isaiah 54, uh, going over to 55. Uh, but I want to start in verse 13 of Isaiah 54. It says, All my children, and we're that group, shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of my children. You know, this is what the Father is saying. I have a war plan, and the war plan is to pursue peace. Hallelujah. Did you know that your enemy uh, has been defeated at the cross of Jesus Christ? The devil has been defeated. Say hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus, because through his blood, the devil was defeated. I just thank the Lord for that. So we're not fighting the devil. We're not fighting Satan or his demons. We are to pursue peace. That's our mission. And it says in 13, 14, In righteousness shall you be established. And we know that the word of God is the righteousness of God. It says, Thou shalt be far from oppression. Hallelujah. You know, you can quote this over yourself. You can confess this, uh, this scripture over yourself every single day. It says here that oppression is going to be far from me. For I shall not fear and from the terror, for it shall come not come near me. Hallelujah. Fear is not going to come near you today if you pursue peace. Behold, they shall surely gather together uh, against us, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. You know, even when the forces of the enemy are coming at us, they're not going to prosper if we are operating in peace. Behold, they shall surely gather together. All right, let's go down to 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, for I have created the waster to destroy. Now look at this, 17. I love 17. I want you to get 17 down in your gut. Hallelujah. Army of God, I am speaking to you today that you are to pursue peace. This is God's plan for war. Hallelujah. You know, King David said, He teaches my hands to war. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, our hands are to be lifted up high uh, unto Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Defender, our Redeemer, our Healer. Hallelujah. Uh, no weapon shall form that's formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment Thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Say, I am a servant of the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is your inheritance. And their righteousness is of me, 
saith the Lord. I love that passage. It's powerful. This message is powerful. I get excited just thinking about God's war plan is not uh, cutting down people. It's not fighting back with our words, but it's pursuing peace. Now let's go over to chapter 55 and let's start in verse 11. So shall my word, now this is talking about the Lord, so shall my word, and this is talking about you because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein I send it. Hallelujah. And so when we speak out our words of peace into a situation, into an environment, uh, into a, a conflict, a confrontation, then praise God. He is going to do that. He's going to bring peace in to your family. He's going to be, bring peace to your children. He's going to bring peace to your finances. He's going to bring peace to your body. He's going to bring peace to your mind. Hallelujah. Some of your minds are scattered and confused. And God says, this day I am bringing peace into your mind that you be settled, that you be established, saith the Lord. In verse 12, for ye shall go out with joy and shall be led forth with peace. How are we led? We are led by the Spirit of God and we are the sons of God. And I command this day that the sons of God take their position and take their place in the army of God. And we are going to pursue peace this day. I don't know about you, but I needed this message. Hallelujah. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and the, all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go over to Matthew. In Matthew, now Jesus was uh, preaching, and these are, these are called the Beatitudes, if you will, but he was talking about serious things. And he was talking about if you if you really want to be blessed, he's saying if you really want to be blessed, let's look at verse 9. It says, blessed are the peacemakers. You're going to be blessed if you bring forth peace, if you walk in peace, if you carry peace, if you fight with peace, you're going to be blessed for you shall be called the children of God. Now, what the Lord spoke to me yesterday was that peace is God's language. That's what he speaks. Hallelujah. When his words come forth, his word of the word of God is a word of peace. Hallelujah. It's a word of encouragement. It's a word of, of hope. It's a word of strength. And he says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of of God. Turn over to Luke chapter 2. Even when Jesus came as, as a babe, this is what was in the heavens. In verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. In your earth, peace. I speak it today. I speak peace to you in the name of Jesus. And they were just crying out, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Now, you know, we're in this earthly realm right now, but God wants us to walk in a higher realm. Are you listening to me? He wants us to walk in the supernatural realm as the army of God. God's war plan is to pursue peace, goodwill toward men. That's what he said as Jesus came upon the earth. Now turn over with uh, to John. Uh, as John was, as uh, Jesus was walking on this earth and he was teaching his disciples in John 14, uh, 27. He says, peace I leave with you. He left a mighty weapon. 
You know, you see a sword behind me here. You see a shield behind me here. But let me tell you something. There is a mightier weapon than all of these things, and it is peace. As we pursue peace. Jesus says, I leave my peace with you. I give it unto you, not as the world gives, but give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And when we're walking in peace, all hell can be breaking loose around us, and the, the enemy can come to steal, kill, and destroy. But we just read in the Word of God that any weapon that he tries to form against us, because we are the children of God, we are the peacemakers here on this earth, hallelujah, and his weapons are worthless. And peace brings them to a nothing. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. There, I'm speaking to uh, particularly two women uh, that are viewing today that the enemy has tried to come to you with discouragement. He has tried to come to you uh, saying that there is no use in going on. I come against that spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus and I tell it to flee from you and I bring peace. I speak peace into your mind and into your body and into your situation because God is already moving in your situation. You're going to see a miracle in the situation that you're dealing with. A miracle from God. Hallelujah. In a turn on over while we're in John uh, to chapter 20. Oh, this, this, is, this is good from the Holy Ghost today. John chapter 20, verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Well, Jesus had peace that he gave. He said, not as the world gives you, but I give you peace that cannot be taken from you. Hallelujah. Even when all of this is breaking loose, he says, you're going to have my peace. And as my Father has sent me, oh, praise God, so I send you. See, we're already commissioned. In the army of God, we are already commissioned. And that mission is to bring peace, to pursue the peace of God. Let's go to Romans. Roman is, Romans is just filled uh, with scriptures um, concerning the peace of God and the army of God. Uh, in Romans 12, 18, it says, If it be possible, as much as lieth within you, live peaceably with all men. Praise God. Well, I don't know what to do in this situation, Sister Sherry. Oh, I've got something coming against me, Sister Sherry. What do I do? Well, how do I fight this? With peace. Bring peace. Pursue peace in this situation. Hallelujah. Romans 14, 17. You know, the kingdom of God. It talks about the kingdom of God not being uh, meat or drink. In verse 17, the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I just thank the Lord for his peace. I thank the Lord that we can walk in peace, that we can live in peace, that the kingdom of God is made up of peace because it is his language. Remember what I said. Peace is God's language. It's how he speaks to us. Turn over to chapter 16, verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. This is what God is doing when we pursue peace, when we live in peace, when we uh, speak peace into our situations then God takes over and he bruises the head of the enemy. Woo! Can you say amen? This is shouting territory. 
Thank you, Jesus. And all my children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of my children. Let's turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We are called to something. We are called. There's many calls. Many calls uh, that we encounter in, in our walk with the Lord. But in uh, this one right here, 1 Corinthians 7, 15. Let's, let's, let's read. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Now that's a word uh, for somebody right there. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not in bondage in these cases. But God hath called us to peace. That's your mission. In any relationship, in any encounter with someone that you work with, or someone that you live with, especially between husband and wife, children and parents, brother and sister, you are called to peace. Isn't that good? Let's, while we're in Corinthians, turn over to 13. 1 Corinthians 13. No, 2 Corinthians, excuse me. 13. Lord, we thank you for this message. We love you. We love you today, Jesus. Let's just lift our hands unto the Lord and let's just praise him right now. Lord, you're so loving. You're so wonderful. Thank you for your peace. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians 13, verse 11, it says, Finally, brethren, that's you, that's me, farewell, be perfect. You know, this is Paul saying to the, the, the people at, at Corinth, Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of, of love and peace shall be with you. How many of you want God with you? Hallelujah. That he'll work with you. That you work with him. Hallelujah. And this is this is it. This is peace. This is what brings us into that oneness. Woo! Thank you, Lord. That oneness with our Father is that we operate in peace. Now we know if we go on into the into the other scriptures in Galatians 5:22, that peace is one of the fruit of the Spirit. It's one of the fruits. And God wants us to bring forth much fruit. And that's what it says in John chapter 15. Uh, in Ephesians 2, 17, I've got, to, I've got to hurry up here, but I've got so much in my belly today. Hallelujah. It says in Ephesians 2, 17 that we're to preach peace. We're to preach peace. We're not to preach hell and brimstone and God's going to knock you over the head with a baseball bat if you do something wrong. If you make a mistake, he's going to stomp all over you. No, we are to preach peace. Hallelujah. So I believe that I'm in the will of the Lord this morning. Thank you, Lord. How many of you want to just come into unity? Come into unity with your, with your, your, your mate, with your spouse, uh, with your family members, uh, with your any situation at work, hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about unity and how do we come into unity, how do we walk in unity, and it's by peace. In verse 3, chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 3, it says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And then let's go on. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Woo, glory! But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Let's go on down here into verse 13. We are given ministries ministry gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and their purpose is to mature the saints that they will walk in the mission of the Lord, that they will speak God's language, hallelujah, that they will be of one mind and one spirit, and they will operate in peace. Let's read. Till we all come into the unity of the faith 
and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. We are going to walk in peace. We're going to walk in that peace. You know, in Philippians 4, 7, it says that there, this peace is beyond our understanding. This peace is beyond the, the natural realm. It is a supernatural force. God's war plan is to pursue peace. In James chapter 3, 18, it says that we are to sow that the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. And in 1 Peter 3.11, it says that we are to seek peace. Let's look at that one. That will be my, my last scripture that we look at today. And then I want to pray, uh, pray for you. 1 Peter 3.11, it says, Let him run away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. And then verse 12, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those that do evil. And so I know that God is watching over his children that are taught of the Lord and great is the peace of their children. He's looking upon us even today. He's looking down upon us and he's saying, I want to move on your behalf. I want to be strong on your behalf. I want to deliver your children. I want to, to redeem your life. Hallelujah. Those that are watching and you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, I am telling you that He will bring you peace that passes understanding. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I believe. Just repeat after me. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for my sins. I come to you right now. And I ask you to come into my life, into my heart, and be my Savior, and be my Lord, and be my peace. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Right now I see uh, several people that you've been all uh, entangled with the things of this life. You've been uh, uh, concerned about what's going over here in your family. You've been concerned about uh, what, how your bills are going to be paid. You've been concerned about what the doctor's report has said about your body. And the Lord says, I bring you peace this day. God's war plan is to pursue peace. And right now I'm doing war in Jesus' name. And by his blood, I speak that peace is in your body. All symptoms have left your body. Whatever it was that was in your body. There's a, a person who's, who's, who's uh, uh, their, their disc in their upper neck and their, in their lower, uh, uh, right around the, the waistline at the end of their tailbone. I see inflammation in those discs. God is taking that away. He's healing Right now, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, receive your healing, receive your peace, for Jesus brings peace. Glory to God. I just thank Him today. I praise Him today for all that He's doing in my life and in my family's life and in this ministry. This ministry is a ministry of excellence. This ministry is a ministry of peace, hallelujah. We go and we preach peace wherever we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. There's a person that your 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 right foot, uh, I don't know if your ankle, you've twisted your ankle, but God is restoring your strength uh, in your right ankle and in your foot. That foot has been swollen, and that swelling is going down in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be at peace. Pursue peace. Because it's God's war plan. Thank you for being today.